Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we invite you into this place. I ask that you would speak to us in your uh, gentle and clear voice. Through Christ we pray. Amen. So several weeks ago when we began asking you all for questions you would like for us to address, the very first question that was asked to me personally before I ever eat, before the services were ever over was the question, Brett, could you preach about Christians and voting? My first thought was no, but rather not. My, first, my second thought was, oh, can you, can you come up with a subject that's going to make more enemies? You know, for for me, is there anything more divisive other than maybe football to talk about than politics? You know what's going to happen after this election? 50% of Americans are going to be giddy and 50% of Americans are going to be upset. Uh, I I, I read a joke this past week. He said, you know what 100% of Americans can agree on when it comes to politics? Politically, 100% of Americans agree. The other 50% has lost their minds. It's true. Hey, this is the best it gets. If you don't think this is... uh. But I want you to know, my concern is not to get people to act a certain way on election day. That's not my concern. As a pastor, I'm a pastor. My concern is that we think like Christ. My concern is Romans chapter 12 too. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Then you will know the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. There is a good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And my concern is, when it comes to political matters, are we more conformed to this world because we're so influenced by the world, or are we transformed to think like Christ? It's a matter of love, isn't it? Remember Jesus said, the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. We love God by the way we think. And our thinking about politics, does it allow us to love God? Because we're looking for his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Or um, are we conformed to this world? And does it allow us to love other people by the way that we act? Now, I think there are a couple of extremes that need to be avoided. The one extreme is caring too much. There's some people that obsess on politics as though it's an idol for them. And it's easy to do, I understand. But it creates anxiety, it robs of joy, it makes people feel hopeless, it makes people feel like, you know, whoever wins this election, you know, my life is at stake kind of thing. It's like, Jesus would say, peace. Peace. That's not a healthy extreme. The other extreme is what I would call an aloof apathy. It's the sense that Christians can have sometimes of, I'm just concerned about spiritual things. I'm concerned about the kingdom, and so I don't really worry too much about politics. Well, Jesus said, you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. And one of the ways that we're salt and light is as Christian citizens. It's why Dietrich Bonhoeffer in World War II said of the German church, we are to be the conscience of the state. See, consciences are not good or bad they ha- unless they are informed. A conscience that is well informed can be good and godly. A conscience that is poorly informed will be ungodly. And if Christians don't inform the conscience of the nation, that vacuum will be filled by atheism. And so we better take our citizenship Seriously. So what I want to focus on today is where can we be united? Where ought we, be to, ought, ought we to be united in political matters? As disciples of Christ, you know, Jesus said, Jesus' prayer was that for his, his, uh, his, his people to be one, his followers to be one, so the world would know that, he, that God sent him. We ought to be united on some things. Even politically, you're saying, Brett, are you saying that Christians ought to be monolithic in politics. No, there are going to be a lot of things we disagree about on opinions. I love that old phrase that says, in essentials, unity, in opinions, liberty, in all things, charity, in all things, love. There are going to be a lot of political opinions we disagree on. Size of budgets, size of defense budgets, involvement in foreign wars, taxes, tax rates, you know, speed limit laws, 
whether people who own cats ought to be allowed to vote, you know, those kind of important things. So the question is, what are the essentials that we ought to be united on? And the place to begin, the one clear essential is that Jesus has all authority over our politics. Jesus said it. Final thing he said in in Matthew, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And then we say, and I will be with you always to the end of the age. The reason we can be good news people no matter what is because not only is Jesus in all authority, but because Jesus is in all authority, then then he's with us always in every situation. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 says it like this. There is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are instituted by God. All authority is derived authority. When God created the world, he created the world for order. Satan, of course, comes to steal, kill, and destroy and to create chaos. But in God's ordering of the world, he delegates his authority. I would say individual authority, individual responsibility. There's the authority of the home. Uh, Children obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and mother. There's the authority of the church. The authority of elders who oversee. And then there's the authority of the state. And the authority of the state is a legitimate authority God given. But it is all derived authority. Uh, See, this matters. I'll never forget the first time I was really challenged by that. I was was probably challenged by this many times. It was like the first time it ever clicked for me. I was in my like 10th, 9th or 10th grade, and I heard Ralph Bennett speak, and he said, there is no sacred secular distinction for Christians. There is no spiritual, unspiritual distinction if we're followers of Jesus Christ. All is under his authority. And I got to thinking about that, and that's, that's really true. There's this natural tendency that we all have to kind of segment our lives. And there's the spiritual dimension. That's like church and worship and Bible and prayer and Christian music. And then there's the secular side, the kind of personal side, like my job and my education and my non-Christian music and my entertainment. And one of the things over there in the unspiritual personal side is politics. Somebody else said it like this. Um, It's as though when we give our lives to Christ, we realize our, our lives are a house. We're all a house. And we have rooms in our houses. And so we surrender our lives to Christ. We say, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. And we'll say, Jesus, you can have the basement of my house. Jesus, you can have the first floor of my house. But on that second floor, Jesus, there is a room there, uh, the money room. I'll let you have some access to that, but that's my room. And career, I mean, that's my room. You you can just stay out of my career. I'll make those decisions myself. And there's some closets there, Jesus. You have no business going in. And when it comes to the political room, that's mine. Abraham Kuyper, though, said it really well. I love the line. To paraphrase him, he says, there is no place, no, no dominion in all of creation that Jesus does not point at and say, mine. The primary concern that I have in talking about political things is not because of politics. It's because of how our attitude toward politics can expose our lack of total surrender to Jesus Christ, our segmentation of life. We have the spiritual part and this unspiritual part. And Jesus would say, it's all mine. You know, and it's a struggle for all of us. I was talking with one of our elders this past week. He says, yeah, I can do pretty well with it for about five minutes. And then all of a sudden I start taking back rooms for myself. So here's the question. On politics, have you said it's all Jesus? All authority belongs to Jesus. Now, I know as soon as I say that, some of you are getting the heebie-jeebies. Are you talking Christian nationalism, you know? Are you talking about, you know, theocracy. No, it's called nomocracy is, is technically would be the, the, and we ought to be familiar with it because we've talked like this since the beginning of the nation. Politicians today even talk like this, liberal and conservative. You remember when they were having trouble coming up with the constitution, um, the, uh, 
um, they, <laughs> they were struggling with it. And Benjamin Franklin, who was probably the least spiritual of all the founders, said, God governs in the affairs of men. What he's saying there is, God is over all. God is the one who's governing. If a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? It's why in the middle of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln declared a national holiday of th- to give thanks to God. It's why before we, it's before we invaded on D-Day, President Roosevelt got before the nation and personally said a prayer. They understood we are under God. <laughs> Have you sung God Bless America lately? You know, I find it interesting. The Super Bowl this year. Actually, I'm sure sometime during the, um, during the World Series here in a couple of weeks, they will t- take a moment and the entire crowd, the entire stadium will sing God Bless America. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. That's the acknowledgement. We are under God. That's not theocracy. By the way, the rabbis would argue there was no theocracy in the Bible. That is acknowledging God's authority. Scan scripture. Uh, Psalm 33 verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalm 82, verse 8, rise up, God, the judge of the earth, for all nations belong to you. Are you still comfortable? Do you understand? There's no nation that has ever existed that has not belonged to God. The place to begin with our political thinking is to understand the United States belongs to God. It's under God. 